Hey everyone, it's Tyler the Antenna Man, and today I'm going to review this Channel Master Titan II Medium Gain Antenna Amplifier, or Preamp for short. It runs about $65 online and can improve your over the air TV reception by adding gain up at the antenna to make up for signal loss in a long coaxial cable. How well does it work? You'll find out in this video. If you're seeing me for the first time, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that little bell icon to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. My YouTube channel is dedicated to the cord cutting community and I'm constantly posting new videos with reception tips, antenna reviews, amplifier reviews, and updates on ATSC 3.0, the new over the air TV standard that's launching in the United States. So getting back to this preamp, this is a well-known model made by Channel Master. I can tell you right now you're going to get a better performing preamp from a reputable company like Weingard, Channel Master, or a few others, compared to a cheap $20 model you'd get at Walmart. This preamp also has an FM trap that can be switched on or off inside the preamp itself. This alone can improve your reception. If you live near an FM radio station that's interfering with a weak VHF TV station. Now I want to explain how preamps work. They usually come in two parts. The amplifier portion goes up at the antenna and then the power inserter supplies power through the coaxial cable so you don't have to run a power cord to where your antenna is. In many situations, a preamp can improve your TV reception because there is a small amount of signal loss in every foot a coaxial cable is run. In some situations, this small amount of signal loss doesn't matter if your signals are strong. But if you have very weak signals, there is a good chance you may be losing some stations in a long coaxial cable. What exactly is a long coaxial cable? It really depends on what kind of antenna you have, how strong or weak the signals are, and the coaxial cable you're using. A cheap RG59 cable is going to have more signal loss compared to a quality RG6 quad shield or RG11 cable. I should also mention if you have an antenna that already has a built-in preamp like this piece of junk, you can add another preamp on it or it likely won't power the internal amplifier and you'll lose reception altogether. So to reiterate, preamps like this model go up at the antenna, are powered with a power inserter like this, and make up for signal loss in a long coaxial cable, which again, the definition of a long coaxial cable varies depending on many factors. I'm actually in the situation where I need a preamp on my antenna. I currently have an antenna set up in the attic while I wait for the roof to be replaced on my house so I can put up a new mass to test out outdoor antennas. If I connect my current antenna to a small TV set using a short cable, I'm able to pick up all the major stations. But after I ran a 40 foot cable to my living room, I could no longer pick up the ABC, CBS, or Fox stations. I used the opportunity to test out over 10 different preamps and some of them were able to bring all of my stations back. For the $65 price tag, will this amplifier be able to complete the task? If you end up deciding to purchase this preamp, please use one of my affiliate links in the description of this video to help support my YouTube channel. To get started, connect your antenna to the port labeled VHF UHF input. For best results, use a short coaxial cable between two to five feet in length. You're then going to connect the long coaxial cable that's going either to a splitter or a TV set to the port labeled output power. Next, you're going to connect the power inserter. There should be no splitters on the coaxial cable between this and the preamp. The top left goes to the power supply that gets plugged in a regular outlet. The bottom left gets connected to the long coaxial cable that's going up to the preamp. Finally, the bottom right gets connected to your TV set or before a splitter. If you're using anything larger than a three-way splitter, you may need an additional powered splitter. I attached a few links in the description of this video to some recommended models. This status light on the preamp indicates that everything is connected correctly. Here's the signal on KYW3 without the preamp. 
The station broadcasts on RF channel 30. It's hovering at around 20 to 32%, only peaking at 36%, and the signal is too low to produce a picture. When the preamp was added, the signal shot up around 20% and produced a solid picture and sound, compared to nothing before. Here's the signal on WNEP 16 without the preamp. The station broadcasts on RF channel 21. It's hovering at around 43 to 53% with a lot of breakup in the picture. When I added the preamp, the signal also shot up around 20% and produced solid picture and sound. You can start to see how adding a preamp can be a difference between a non-watchable signal and a watchable one. Here's a signal on Fox 56 without the preamp. The station broadcasts on RF channel 22. It's kind of jumping around, but not really producing anything besides a frozen image. When I add the preamp, the signal level was also increased by about 20 to 22% to produce a watchable picture without any breakup. So this preamp worked very well for my situation where the TV stations were able to be picked up with a shorter cable, but no longer came in when I ran a long coaxial cable to my living room. You can clearly see the difference a preamp can make in some situations. However, this preamp won't solve everyone's reception problems, especially if the antenna is a problem. I can't tell you how many times I see comments of people going, oh, I got this great antenna, I had this booster, but the booster didn't work, and then they leave a one-star review. It's not that the preamp didn't work, it's that your antenna is not picking up the TV stations in the first place. If you already tried several preamps and none of them were able to bring in your stations reliably, the antenna is the problem and you're going to need a better setup. This is why I offer custom antenna recommendations on my website at antennamanpa.com. There I'll go through your unique reception situation, take a look at the frequencies in your area, how strong and weak they are, and make a determination on what antenna would work best for your area. Antennas are not a one-size-fits-all model, and investing in a custom antenna recommendation from me can prevent you from spending hundreds of dollars on different antenna models going up and down off the roof many times. You can end all that madness by signing up for a custom antenna recommendation on my website. If you end up deciding to purchase this preamp, please use one of my affiliate links in the description of this video to help support my YouTube channel. Whether you decide to purchase this preamp or go with another model, make sure that it is properly grounded with your antenna if it's outside to prevent static buildup which can attract a lightning strike. I have a video on this topic attached in the description of this video. Please do not leave a bad review of this preamp if it doesn't fix your reception issues. I can't stand when fully functional preamps like this get bad reviews because people simply don't understand how they work. This makes up for signal loss in a long coaxial cable, and if your antenna is not picking up the station in the first place, no preamp is going to help the cause. Thanks again for watching this YouTube video. A huge thanks to these folks who support me on Patreon and are members of my YouTube channel. If you would like to help support my YouTube channel while gaining exclusive perks, such as behind the scenes content, an exclusive monthly live stream, and direct contact with me, visit patreon.com forward slash antenna man, or click the join button in this video. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel for more cord cutting and antenna related information, and have an awesome day.